Minimizing and decluttering my home has had a domino effect in many aspects of my life. I began decluttering my home, my wardrobe, my schedule, and saying no to things that I didn't want to do, spending my money and time more wisely, and being more intentional about my purchases. Decluttering is definitely an important aspect of simplifying, but it can often feel overwhelming to think about what areas of our life need simplifying. So today I will be sharing with you 25 tiny ways to simplify your life. And be sure to stick to the end for my favorite one and share your own tiny hacks for living a simpler, happier life. Starting off with a couple of food related ones, simplify your meals. Have a few easy to make favorite meals and then just alternate the veggie or the protein. This way you'll feel like you're having something different all the time, but it's really the main same ingredients and you'll be much more likely to have these ingredients on hand. For example, I love to make garbanzo bean soup with carrots. Sometimes I will use the garbanzos in a stir fry. Sometimes I add a boiled egg to the soup, or I might drain them and use them in a salad. Find some healthy ingredients that you can make your own kitchen essentials and just switch up the way that you prep them. This takes meal prep to a whole nother level because you're eating the same thing every day without feeling like you're eating the same thing. Use your freezer. Batch prep your basics and freeze a portion immediately after cooling for a lazy quick meal. Sticking with the garbanzo example, when I make a soup, I freeze a container to use later on so that I don't always have to cook. If we recently had the soup and I don't feel like cooking, but I also don't want the same thing, I may just add some salsa, some spinach, or some boiled eggs. I love a good freezer meal, but just remember to thaw either that morning or night before. If you have one, use your slow cooker. Slow cook meals when you're going out for errands or going to work so that you have food ready for when you get back home. Many of our legumes and soups I make this way because this way, when I leave to go to work and come back home, Dinner is warm and ready with very minimal effort. Wash your dishes immediately after eating. Rudy and I don't have a dishwasher or a dish rack, and I did this on purpose when we moved into this home. One, because I didn't see a need for a dishwasher, and two, because I didn't want an ugly dish rack staring me in the face every day and taking up room in our counters. But by not having a dishwasher, it kind of forces us to deal with our dishes immediately. So usually while I'm cooking, I'll wash the, like, the bigger items, and then after dinner, we'll wash them and I'll towel dry and put them all away. Because I'm always on top of this, it really doesn't take but just a few minutes. It's often when we let the mess pile up that things get a little bit more complicated. So this simple habit can greatly help to reduce your mess. All right, enough food related tips. Take your shoes off inside the house. For me, visitors are a completely different thing. I will never ask a visitor to take their shoes off when they're in my home because it's very much a cultural thing. But for our family, we definitely abide by this rule. This next one is also part of the reason why I don't spend nearly as much time keeping the floors clean as I used to. And it is to have a designated dirty shoe for when you're going to be doing messy activities or when it's just an icky, muddy, rainy day. A rain boot is perfect for this, but if you're like me and you don't have one, an old worn out shoe will do just fine. Part of simplifying our cleaning routines, I think is just preventing the mess to begin with. And tackling your shoe situation is definitely a great way to reduce the mess. Ditch your laundry hamper or at least reduce the amount that you have. We don't have any dirty laundry hampers. Anything that's dirty immediately goes in the washing machine. And when it's full, I wash. And whites for me are pretty easy because we rarely wear white. Pretty much on purpose because it's hard to keep white white. But for the few whites we have, I wash those with our linens, which I typically wash separately anyway. Have all the same kind of sock. A couple of years back, I bought a pack of all the same black socks. Because of this, I never have to worry about the lost loners or finding a matching sock. Our kids also have the same socks as well, making it so much easier because there's no sifting to do. Not to mention, all black socks means no having to worry about icky sock stains. Condense your undergarments. I'm definitely a plain Jane on this one. I alternate between the same two black strapless bras because I don't have to worry about straps showing this way. And I also have the same kind of underwear, with the exception of a couple of black granny panties for period days. Because it's all black, everything matches, and it's something that I don't even have to think about. DIY your signature drink. If you have a signature drink that you enjoy, find a way to make it at home. Obviously, this can help you save money, and when you have financial strain, saving money can definitely simplify your life. But even though it takes more time to make it, you actually end up saving time. Unlike money, time is that resource you cannot make back. And this is what simplifying is all about. Think about it. By the time you drive to the Starbucks or whatever place, 
Get in line, order, wait for your drink, pay, and drive to wherever you were going. You could have made a similar drink for a fraction of the cost. And if it matters to you, possibly even a healthier version. We purchased an espresso machine a year ago because Rudy is very particular about the taste of his espresso. I use it all the time to get hot water for my teas as well as to froth milk for my beloved lattes. For me, once I learned how to make my favorite drinks at home, I no longer felt the desire to buy the store-bought version. Order your groceries online. Two of the grocery stores near me have pickup options available and I love it. It has been game-changing for me. Once you've condensed your cooking to your favorite items, you'll have items that you'll basically purchase on a regular basis. So what I love about this is that I can just go to my history and reselect the same items, give or take a few things. Then I just pull in and somebody else has already roamed through the halls and bagged them for me. The places that I go to don't charge anything extra for this, but it's also a way to help reduce those random purchases out of curiosity or distraction at the checkout line. Keep only your favorites. We make so many decisions in a day, from what to wear, to what road to take, to the big decisions like, do I take this job or start this project? There's a thing called decision fatigue, which basically describes our dwindling ability to make good decisions as the day goes on. Because as the day goes on, we've already had to make tens or hundreds of decisions, often completely irrelevant and unimportant. As an example, if you have two coffee mugs that are very similar, but every day you spend just a few seconds deciding which mug to use, pick your favorite and consider getting rid of the other and find as many situations in your home as possible where you can get rid of the alternate choice. An added bonus is that everything you use will be your favorite. Set night mode and do not disturb at night. I'm not going into detail on this one because I have an entire playlist devoted to having balance with our technology. But simplifying our time also means setting boundaries and prioritizing what matters to you. If you're used to being available 24 seven and have had a pointless message wake you up through the night, make the decision today to prioritize rest. Your body will thank you. Immediately address mail as soon as it enters the door of your home. Scan it, email it to yourself, shred it, whatever you have to do, but don't leave it for later. Later just piles a huge mess you'll eventually dread tackling and more likely procrastinate on as it gets bigger. I love this next one. Listen to decluttering videos, audiobooks, or podcasts while you clean or declutter. Let me know in the comments, am I the only one that listens to these sort of videos while cleaning or decluttering? I love to do this because often while I'm going through my house and tidying, I'll often get an idea of something that I can simplify in my own home and I find it very motivating. It is actually one of the biggest reasons why I enjoy cleaning my home, because I've paired it with something that I enjoy. This is what author James Clear calls habit stacking in his book, Atomic Habits. It's often hard to know where to begin decluttering or simplifying if you already feel overwhelmed, but by making it a pleasing activity by pairing it with something that you enjoy doing, it makes it much more likely that you'll keep up the motivation, improving your results. Eat the frog every day. Every day, do one thing that you dread doing, but would feel a whole lot better once you've accomplished it. Scan those documents that piled up. Take out that garbage that's overflowing. Write that resume that you're afraid to write. Or take that cold shower to wake you up in the morning and get you going. Eating the frog is a great way to help develop discipline and confidence as you actually do the things that you've set out to do. Sleep early or take naps. It can be really easy to try to push off sleep in order to get things done but we often end up less productive and less creative the next day. I have a video on how I wake up at 5 a.m. that's packed full of tips to help you go to sleep earlier and wake up earlier. And for me, waking up early is definitely my preferred for productivity. But I recently learned about sleep chronotypes. You can take a free online quiz to find out what your ideal sleep schedule is based on your own body's natural tendency. Unfortunately, most employers will not accommodate your preferred sleep schedule, but knowing how your body works can help you create a better routine unique for you. Let me know in the comments, are you a night owl or a morning person? Quit using social media to follow other people's lives. There is nothing quite more time sucking than devoting our time to people that we don't even know or truly care about and failing to pay that attention to improving our own lives. If you use social media for business or other beneficial ways, awesome. But for most people, that tends not to be the case. And it often ends in a spiral of never endless scrolling that accomplished pretty much nothing. Schedule everything. If you're often late or forget events or important dates, 
Do yourself a favor and download the free Google Calendar app and schedule everything as soon as you agree to it. If you're at the dentist scheduling your next visit, schedule it right there and then. You'll never have to rely on appointment reminder cards and you'll seem like the master at remembering birthdays because you can add them directly to your contacts and they load onto your calendar. So the next time you get an invite, you can put everything in and declutter those invites and appointment reminder cards. Write everything down. I love journaling. I've definitely found it beneficial in my life and it's something that truly has helped improve my life. I have a video describing 10 different techniques that you can use if you're a beginner at it. But if you're not quite ready to start writing on paper just yet, at the very least, use your notes app on your phone, sticky notes, or heck, even a napkin to write down things that you want to remember, such as that recipe that you made that actually turned out well, or that thing that you want to declutter when you get home. Writing things down makes my life so much easier. Eliminate your TV or limit yourself to one long episode or movie per day. If you love your K-dramas, as tempting as it may be to go on a binge, when you're able to step away and say, that was enough, no more, you're prioritizing your own health and your own real life over that fictitious life that you're submerging yourself in. In my video, How Quitting TV Has Changed My Life, I share with you the real issues that Rudy and I faced in our marriage and the huge impact that it had on our lives. But if you don't find yourself with a problem of addiction, then maybe having a simple house rule of just one movie or one long episode just might be the perfect balance. Declutter your credit cards. Unless you use your credit cards wisely for points and such, consider paring down your credit cards to a select few. I remember at one point having several credit cards because certain stores had discounts if you purchased with a credit card. But I found that because of this, I was buying items that I wouldn't otherwise buy if I didn't have these cards. And then I had the annoyance of having to remember to pay these bills at different times. I eventually got tired of it and I canceled all of my store credit cards. I don't negate that there are some awesome ones out there for like travel rewards and points. But really just ask yourself if your credit cards are serving you. And if not, consider getting rid of them. Automize your payments. If you haven't done this already, you are missing out. Rudy and I have automatic bill pay on everything that offers it. It was always a nuisance to have to log in and pay for things. And let's just say that after having kids, I lost my touch. And we woke up to the lovely surprise of not having phone service once, twice, okay, maybe a few times. I love that I don't have to think about paying bills anymore. Automize savings. In the same way that you want to make paying your bills automatic, your savings should also be a priority. So if you have a recurring schedule that you're paid in, log into your bank account and create automatic transfers. Just like your employer pays you, also make the choice to pay yourself. And lastly, my favorite is to have a capsule wardrobe. This is one that I don't feel like I've quite curated yet. I have a few shirts that I rotate through, but I don't quite want to give myself the budget to replace a few items just yet. Instead, what I've been doing is shopping my own closet. I've eliminated what I don't feel good in, even if they were expensive, and even if they're pretty. I used to keep things because they were just pretty and I spent money on them, but if I'm not getting use out of them, someone else may. The phrase, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no, can be a great rule of thumb to help you create the capsule wardrobe of your dreams. So go through your own closet and find your favorites and eliminate the rest. And you just might find that doing this can bring you so much more joy because this way, every day, you're wearing your favorite. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and help support my channel. Also subscribe if you wanna see more content aimed at minimalism and slow living. And don't forget to share your own simple living tips down in the comments below so we can all learn from each other. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.